speaker is an assistant professor in the Department of Management Studies from IIT Madras, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi. She's done a doctorate in the area of organizational behavior, graduation in psychology and masters in human resources development. Uh, she teaches human resources, organizational behavior, cross-cultural management, research methodology and professional development courses at IIT. Her research interests are humor, innovation, integral education, emotional contagion, psychology, spirituality, and ancient wisdom. Sorry, and the list goes on. And uh, to her creative bubbly side, she is a trained Carnatic singer, has given many concerts. She also plays the violin, plays the violin and drums. She is a part of a music band, and that's called Arc Lights. So let's welcome her. She's going to speak on a very intriguing topic, assessing one's ego state through transactional analysis. So it's going to be music to our ears. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, all of you. Uh, so you can call me Viji. My, I have uh, created a revolution in the class. Students now call me Viji. Wow. So very hard to change their mindsets, but now they start calling me. Yeah, so very happy. Ma'am. So best thing is undergrad and grad. So. I feel that's an achievement. So I don't want to start off with anything. Before that, I request you to fill this questionnaire that I've given you. Um, so this is the technique that I go through usually. It doesn't prime you with any concepts. No, no, only two pages. 36 questions. Sir. So let me know if you have any clarifications. Certain statements seem to be very silly, but uh, there is an underlying meaning to it. A few situations uh, to see how we respond. What happens uh, when you are at a traffic signal as a red light? Right? And uh, it is just coming to the orange and the guy behind you starts honking. What is your typical response? Typical. I normally, ignore. normally ignore. Normally. What do you feel inside, or do you feel, or you think something? Irritated. Irritated. Yes. Anger. <laughs> Very violent there. Okay. Okay, great. What else? You turn back ah. and start back. Just turn back. I use okay. Just to find out whether it's a male or a female. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. You I say? used to be, but now I become numb. Somebody honks, fine, go ahead, take it. Okay. I can't do anything. Sir? Yes, like a different answer. When I'm in a car, the guy in front is sightseeing and the guy behind me is always in a hurry. <laughs> Balanced. Right. So, if possible, remember the responses that you are giving. So, you go to a restaurant, say Sangeeta, and you order for curd vada, which usually happens with me. So, I order Thair vada, and uh, the, the curd is very sour. What would you do? Or replace it with any dish that you soup, and it is not hot at all. Ask for sugar. Sugar. Okay. You'll return it. So, how will you 
tell uh, the waiter. This is not the way I expected. Okay, okay. This so, is not super tall. <laughs> this is not super tall. Any, anything? <laughs> okay. So that's why typical. Out of ten times, maybe six times, you have the same response. How will you return it? Okay, fine. Okay, you are in a queue as you are in a hurry and there is this person jumping the line. I usually call him and say, sir, this is a queue. Okay. That's all. Okay. Beyond that, if he still jumps, he would let him go. Maybe he is in a hurry. Okay. Just curious, is your adult high? What is adult? Okay. The third one? A is 11. Psychologists are 99 percent wrong. So, this is the first time. <laughs> Proves. So, there is a movie, you are very interested and there are people constantly, you know, having parallel murmuring. All these scenarios are very common. How do we respond to it usually? It is relative. It is a relative score. So, you are in the movie, you are interested in the movie and uh, people nearby are murmuring continuously, you know, it is constant murmur. How would you react? Okay. <laughs> Stern voice. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, right. So typical responses, uh, you know. So this is the base for bringing this concept of transaction analysis. Dr. Eric Byrne, uh, an American psychiatrist, coined the term. So transaction is uh, an exchange that we have. So I ask you, how are you? It's a stimulus. The response that I get, right? It's a transaction. As simple as that. So what Byrne says is, that within ourselves we have three parts to us. We either behave in a parental manner, we either behave in an adult manner or a childlike manner, right? which is PAC. So he differentiated PAC from the actual parent, adult and child with capitalization. So it is parent with a P, I haven't, uh, right? parent with a P, A with adult and uh, C with child. So what he said was within us we have different components, parts of personality and this is not constant. Although we have our own preferences. So I said out of 10 times, 6 times I behave like my parent for example or a parental figure or 6 times I behave in a very adult manner. We will talk about what each one is and it is not watertight a lot of overlaps to it. So why TA? Uh, so after half an hour, we would be empowered to change if need be. Say we are in a particular ego state. So that's what he called ego state. If we are constantly in the parent ego state, we have the option or the free will to change to another ego state if we want. That is giving us empowerment. That's the first takeaway from this session. It helps us to communicate effectively and thereby have good personal, interpersonal relations. So, who is our first teacher? Okay, so just quickly describe your parent or significant. So, you have two of them, right? Your dad and mom. And usually it is two extreme ends and you are stuck between them. So, which one are you asking now? Both. So, a strict mom, okay. um, the guiding, letting you do, try things like that. So, how would you? So, this? great. You have, there are two parts to the parent and you have spoken about both of them. Correct. So, Eric Byrne says, there are two types of parents, right? We will park it here, we will get some more response I will come back to you.
that it's not even mentioned here. That is, there is no critical, no bossy, no judgmental. I could do anything. Okay. Dependable, caring. Caring, dependable, right? Caring in the right amount or? Caring in the right amount. Okay, okay. I think it's mostly captured the essence of it. You usually have a good cop and a bad cop. You have a father playing one and the mother playing the other. Right. Protective. Protective. Okay. So, Burn says the first teachers who are parents actually uh, teach us a lot of things. And if we see, over the years, we would have become like one of them. So, uh, I've been told that I'm just like my grandma. <coughs> the way I speak, the way I walk. So, certain things we imbibe without knowing. So, it happens at the subconscious level. So, that's the parent ego state. This is, again, in the past. And when you come to the child ego state, how are you as a child? Stubborn, okay. Playful. Naughty. 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 Are you the same now? Innocent. Innocent? Yes. Yep. Yes, okay. Quiet. Quiet. So we have some traits like we have we were as a child and we we follow the same pattern as we go along. That's the childlike ego state. We could alternate between any of these. That's the fun. And the adult ego state is rooted in the here and now. It's highly rational, whereas the childlike, the child ego state is highly emotional. So whenever I say feelings or I take a class and I come and tell Gopal, God, I'm feeling so bad. I didn't do a good job. They were sleeping. That's the childlike ego state that's coming up. Certain classes, so today I finished a class and said, fine, I have really prepared. Still they were sleeping, fine, that's fine. Suddenly I am in the adult ego state. So he asks, how come you changed? Right. So we can alternate and that's the beauty of transactional analysis. You have the free will to change. Personality is really moldable. So these are the three states. So parent rightly called the taught concept, what we observe and imbibe. The adult ego state is the thought the thinking that happens and the child, the felt or the emotions. I can find the critical parent in your workplace. So, so you have the critical parents, so the two, two uh, coins to the parent. One is critical controlling and both have the functional and the dysfunctional aspects. So in all the ego states, you have the positives as well as the negatives. So a critical parent is usually stereotyped as negative but there is a positive side also so what how would you recognize a critical parent critical controlling Constructive is the positive right <laughs> don't, don't micromanage do this do that exactly don't do this. so certain words that they keep using so don't do this you should have so that's why you said uh, this is not in the restaurant. You responded saying this is not the way this should be. So is your CP high? CP yeah. Thank God. I was really holding my breath. Okay. So the terminologies that we use also is like you should have done that. You know, it ought to be like this. There is a, this is what I expect. These are some terms that a CP uses, very judgmental and uh, evaluative. I usually talk about the Shani Bhagavan in mythology. So it is either right or wrong, the grey areas that do not exist. So can you relate with a CP in your workplace, very rule bound, colleague or boss, you know, this has to be done like this, very stubborn and rigid. The finance department. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about an individual. Where is the last one? The legal department. <laughs> 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 QC department. 
So it's like the parochialism. So my way is the only way. So it stifles creativity. So uh, your colleague comes and tells you, I have this particular great idea. Let's do that. And you say, see, see, let's just go according. Don't get over into now. Let's just finish it. This is important. That's not the rational side to it. You're stifling creativity by saying, this is the only way to go. There is a CP in you. Highly judgmental. Constantly criticizing. Very few encouraging words. That really puts off people. Are we like that? Are we like that? Critical bossy. Any positives? So both sides are there. For a critical parent, are there any positives? Yes. What? It is the end result because they don't want to go wrong. So in the interest of you doing things right. So okay. then they want things to be Okay. Right. And when is a CP the ideal form to maybe lead? In critical or situations. Exactly. During emergencies, I cannot be a nurturing parent. So I'll say, okay, so let me get your ideas. And then your something would be on fire. So that's not so critical parent has its purposes, but constant use of CP pushes away people because all that you can do is criticize. So I go with a particular thing and you say the first thing that you see is uh, see you have not aligned the report properly. You give me with so much noise, how can I correct it? So by the way, this is my this was my statement to my student. Quickly, I was like, okay, that's a CP acting. And I changed to a nurturing parent. So, you should just need to take care of this. And immediately... You get the same thing after 10 times. They, what, pardon? You get the same thing after 10 times only. You get a high CP. <laughs> Physi physical <Right>. CP. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Certain things are now out in the open. I think this is life. Oh God. <laughs> so it is useful, but constant use of it is not very healthy in a uh, workplace, especially. And uh, this can be the par It can uh, be applied in family also. So you, so wife the cooks something. And what do you say? Delicious. <laughs> all. And when do you say that? Do you go out to the next room and are you scared to say that? It depends on how long you are married. <laughs> So a lot of like right, right. So there are positives to critical. Um, I think they may be able to spot risks and things in your approach much faster. Right. Very analytical. Critical. Yes. Very evaluative. And therefore, uh, yeah. At, in terms of uh, crisis, this is the best ego state to have. So I have some mu movie clippings to add to this but uh, I don't know about the time mm. maybe we can just go through few right. this is a classic example of an email that's high CP I think what you've done uh, what have you have able to uh, been able to achieve in the past one year is very little progress you were responsible for this task you should have been more proactive so that we could have averted this crisis I'm not particularly happy with the way you've managed the team as well you do not communicate you just sit there and criticize there are no encouraging words from you ever. So a lot of caps. This is not to tell you that you have failed completely. Gone. That's the best line. It is just to tell you how things should be done here so that we achieve the best results. God forbid we send mails like this to our colleagues. No, really. So when, when I read this, so say I am Ranjan, I read this, I feel terrible. There are no so this guy is a super hypocrite to me. So he doesn't have any encouraging words and so this is a classic example of CP. The other side is nurturing parent as the word itself says nurturing. You are very nurturing and 
caring. So do you have someone in your team who notices when others are stressed out? So you, this person always has the time to listen to you. There's always a group of people around him or her. They always come to this person and share. High nurturing parent. The downside? Taken for a ride. Yes. So you have time only to do that. And what, what else? Taken for a ride, yes, definitely. After some time, what will this person start feeling? Which person? The person? The, the NP guy. Actually, hmm. it down all the problems of Right. Because, say, if you are not insulated properly, this will affect you. And the third is, it's only receive, it's only giving. So you don't have time to receive from others. Because you are always giving love, give, showing affection, showing concern. What about your own, who will take care of you? So that's the downside to a nurturing parent. So that's the parent ego state. And on the other hand, we have the child ego state. I think Shwe, as far as I know, is a free natural child. Very, very bubbly and cheerful and uh, no, uh, no, there are no, uh, whatever, there is congruence, thought, mind and action. <laughs> Some of us are, re we really spread joy. People would want to be with us, very bubbling and positive. That's the free natural child. And the downside to it is don't finish a task on time. not serious at all. Are you meaning somebody? <laughs> right. So at this point, a disclaimer is usually after workshops, you just go and box people. So ah, there is MP. There, MP. That's a danger with such workshops. So if we categorize them, it dilutes the value of a particular uh, ego state. <laughs> you are always into high and not in the other sense. Nothing could shake you from the sense that everything is okay with the world. And the uh, words that you use, let us make sure this is fun for everybody. People should have fun. It's so great to be here at work and and also the negative emotions, very emotional this person is. So I feel sad that we didn't achieve the goal. Any examples from movies? Janelia. Yeah, that's a good one. is not a free natural child. He is more of a rebellious child. So on one hand, we have the natural child and the other, the adapted child. And we have a lot of bifurcations. Here, we have the rebellious. So whatever somebody says, I want to do exactly the opposite, just for the sake of it. Just for the sake. Just to just bug them. You hate people bossing you around and do you openly object? Yes, you do openly object. Very argumentative for the sake of arguing. So, uh, no, it's a stupid rule anyway. These are rebelling for the sake of it puts off people. You know, that's one side. And the other side is Kumbhadra and Sami, you know, very yes boss. So, whatever happens, you have only yes coming out of your word. So, Hari, the boss wants to see you. What's your response? Sub, okay. Some people, so when I say um, GS or Professor, uh, my HOD wants to see me, I don't know, my AC is very high actually. So immediately there is something going on. Oh God, what did I do? So that's an AC. You are always wanting to please others. Usually happens with the only child. So, no, sorry, I will improve. So you have in the questionnaire, thank you, I will say sorry. All these are certain uh, mannerisms of an adapted child and long duration of pent up emotions you just burst one day and people will be wondering what the hell happened suddenly you have burst so this is another email 
How are you? I am so sorry for delaying the journal review. I wanted to submit this on time but felt really bad that yet again I could not commit. Please accept my apologies. I will submit it by end of term. Hope this will not deter you from giving me reviews. Your journal is of higher. I will not forgive myself. See how emotionally it's laid. No, if I do not get to do the reviews. Hope this hasn't changed anything. Oh God. Please do send and promise to submit. Thanks so much for your patience. Just really irritating because this person cannot stand up for himself or herself, constantly wants approval of others. And in the child, you have the little professor, the curious, you know, we have children very curious, always exploring. And this is what ideally we would like in our students, for example, the little professor, very curious, alert, want to know things. And now this adult, which balances here and now rational. But too much of adult is also very annoying sometimes. Because, so I say, uh, I'm feeling very down. See, there are so many people in this world who feel down. There are so many problems. If a person, say if a spouse answers like this, you'll just want to bash him. <laughs> so, someone who says, what are the alternatives? No, let's look for causes. Very solution oriented, uh, want to get into business. Right? Not emotional at all. Usually people say this is the ideal and uh, where the adult is the highest. So let's reflect back to your egogram. And for a second just think, is it true? Leave alone the scores. Does it actually reflect your personality? Because sometimes we may not have answered the questions properly. So this is critical parent, nurturing parent, adult, the natural child, little professor and adapted child. Anybody wants to share? Of the ego states, nurturing parent, adult and natural child are supposed to be the positive ones. So if they are high, it's a good indicator. A CP being very low talks about maybe we should bring in our assertiveness. Very low score indicates that you are very tolerant, yes. It's not subservient. You, you're not. You're being very diplomatic, for example. Many of us spend in the corporate world. Right. Now, the corporate world goes by the culture of the organization. True. So, in the culture, if you want to fit into the culture, so you need to mold your personality to the culture to exhibit that behavior Correct. to adopt that culture. So, which is your lowest? C lower, lowest is CP. Highest? Highest is NC. Natural child. That's what it comes to. No, do you agree with that? More or less. Okay. CP being low and natural child being high is actually a positive sign. Why? Because we are not very critical of others. But we need to be careful. Are we no, give, that's, expressing that is, our that opinion? Again, I'm saying I'm actually not that. Yeah. But given the organizational culture, the culture has prop. Perhaps it's a, it's my own reflection here to reflect back and see. Probably the culture has, you know, changed. molded me or changed me. So I am asking you a question. So it is also related to the culture and the environment you work. Perhaps may not be a true reflection. That's otherwise. true. There are uh, workplace appropriate behaviors. But what does it tell you about your authenticity? No, typically uh, authenticity is one part of it. That is when you come come back home on your social sphere. On the organizational sphere, you tend to adapt yourself because. That's the behavior which the organization looks out for. In fact, it's, it's, it's even integrated as a part of your PMS. Okay. So, let me ask you. So, I come to you, I'm your uh, colleague, and ask you for a feedback on something. You do not like it actually. What will you, how will you respond? You do not like what I've done. I give you a report and it's not good. I mean, you are saying you give me a, a report. Yes. And then you are sharing that with me. Right. 
Yeah, so it depends on the context in which uh, I, I, if, if a colleague of, uh, of uh, HR comes and gives me that feedback, perhaps I will take it in the right spirit. No, no, in your team, I am I'm a colleague of, I mean your team. Okay, you are so, uh, talking of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the subordinates or the deputies. Yeah. So, I, I give you a report okay, okay. and I ask you how is it and what, you don't like it actually. What, how would you respond? How, what would you say? No, I uh, respond the way that, uh, in a natural way that this should have been like that. There my, uh, no, uh, many a times, if I say if you were uh, uh, mentioning a few minutes ago, is it 6 out of 10 times or uh, 2 out of 10 times? 6, 6, out, six of out of 10 times. Most, I actually say what I want to say and say, uh, guide them the way it should be. So, CP is actually high. That's, that's exactly what I said. CP is actually but right. But given the fact, that's exactly what I was coming to because right. I was reflecting on my score. I was exactly coming. So mostly this CP score is related to the culture of the environment you are actually operating on. So you are not the same in the family that's as well. That's, what, that's exactly what because what happens is typically in an organization you spend more amount of time there. And so therefore you change your behavioral, uh, you know, the way you think and the way you act that becomes a behavior, the but behavior I, becomes a culture. But I still feel there, there will be some amount of consistency across situations for personality. We will just, uh, maybe I will take it offline. So what else, any other thoughts quickly? To add to what is that, two things, one that should actually uh, differ depending upon in what uh, circumstances or what situation you are. And it should also vary according to your moods, your, you know, and it should depend upon what trans, uh, what state the other person is. Probably in these three th th things which I thought. In my scores, I thought, you know, uh, I mean, there are some which are correct, some which are not correct. So again, I was wondering whether uh, you can brand a person based on some questions. On some questions? Yeah. This is what I was thinking. There is no branding at all. That's what, ah, yeah. we shouldn't categorize. Okay, right. Yeah. So how do you find out if you are in a particular ego state? I have five minutes. Right. So a critical parent usually has words like don't you dare, you know, you should. And what's the phys uh, physical gesture, maybe frowns, hands on hips. These are some behavioral cues that we can get. Attitudes highly judgmental and critical, condescending perhaps. Nurturing, very. so some people are very, very physical. So they come and say, so you fine. Okay, high nurturing parent, very consoling, um, holds hands, caring. The adult, constructive, direct, questions a lot. So what needs to be done here? Fine, leave alone the emotions. What needs to be done to get solutions? So this is the adult. The natural child, hey, come on, okay. So how are you? This is a natural child. Little professor, so... I can maybe leave the PPT with you. So these are some cues that we can get. I will come to the movies if we have time. I just want to say we all have a preferred ego state, a dominant ego state, that, but it can be alternated. Some have in constant ad, uh, advising critical mode, some people analyze live only with facts and some operate with feelings all the time, very highly emotional. This is how, what we do. We, if a person is highly from a child ego state, we should invite them into an adult ego state by asking questions. Immediately from the emotional state, it will shift to a rational mode. The switch will be, so the left brain, left brain will be on and the right brain with high emotions will be off quickly. So I am crying and suddenly I ask, so what is it that actually bothers you? So immediately my shift is to the answer, I become less emotional. These are some ways to bring the adult into you. If somebody is highly critical, constantly criticizing, you need to invite them into a nurturing parent mode. How will we do that? Asking for that. So I bring the report to you and say, just rubbish and throw it away. So what needs to be done here? Just tell me what needs. That will automatically shift their CP stance to something else, hopefully a nurturing parent. Sometimes we are very serious, back at IIT researchers are very serious scholars. When we do this uh, workshop with them, I ask them to become more 
of a natural child. So Crazy Mohan said, life is easy, life is crazy, take it easy. So, so from this half an hour, which is like no justice to TA at all, what are our ego states is the first question I hope has been answered. If the results are not true, I request you to please do it again. You may get different answers because now that you know the concepts. What are my colleagues ego states? Some people are constantly whining and seeking attention. Quickly you know that, okay, this guy is a child ego state. You are not boxing them, you are not categorizing them. It helps you deal with them. That is taken in another module called transactions, which we don't have time. And can these ego states be altered to bring about happiness and harmony? Yes. So I quickly wanted two minutes. Think of two situations where you manifest this ego state of yours. For example, high adapted child. So whenever I go and speak to my HOD, I am in this AC mode. I want to change that. What do I do? Tuck, tuck, tuck. So this, these are the action steps that I want you to quickly think of. Two minutes. Can we do that or we have time? No. no. Okay. Please do that as a homework. <coughs> <laughs> so I'll, uh, so there may be blocks because being an adapted child actually serves your purpose because you don't have to really push yourself. These are the blocks that I'll identify and do something about it. So finally, if you want to go fast, yes, go alone. But if you want to go far, we need people and having the right ego state, the appropriate ego state at any point of time is critical. Thank you. Uh, I'll just quickly play a video that talks about, you tell me what. Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner. How are you? Good morning. Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner. Good to see you again. Chris Gardner. Pleasure. I've been sitting out there for the last half hour trying to come up with a story that would explain my being here dressed like this. And, and I wanted to come up with a story that would demonstrate qualities that I'm sure you all admire here, like, like earnestness or diligence or team playing to something. And I couldn't think of anything. So the truth is, I was arrested for failure to pay parking tickets. Parking tickets? <laughs> and I ran all the way here from the, the Polk station, the police station. What were you doing before you were arrested? I was uh, painting my apartment. Is it dry now? <laughs> I hope so. Jay says you're pretty determined. Oh, he's been waiting outside the front of the building with some 40-pound gizmo for over a month. He said you're smart. I like to think so. And you want to learn this business? Yes, sir, I want to learn this business. Have you already started learning on your own? Absolutely. Jay. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen Chris? No, I don't know. One too many, apparently. <laughs> Has he ever dressed like this? No. No. Jacket and tie. First in your class, in school, high school? Yes, sir. How many in the class? Uh, Twelve. It was a small town. <laughs> I'll say. But I was also first in my radar class in, in the Navy, and that was a class of 20. Can I say something? Um, I'm the type of person, if you ask me a question and I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you that I don't know. But I bet you what, I know how to find the answer, and I will find the answer. Is that fair enough? Chris, what would you say if a guy walked in for an interview without a shirt on? And I hired him, what would you say? He must have had on some really nice pants. <laughs> okay, 
happy child? He is uh, helping. Uh, okay. NC. Interesting responses. I thought of this person as in an adult ego state. So before coming in, he is thinking of responses, what to say. And uh, in the waiting room, he sits and okay, decides and comes in really in the here and now. If we can think of other responses, if he was in a CP mode, what would he have said? He would have said, I mean, uh, I had to do this, it became late and a lot of excuses. If he was in the child ego state, he would have been emotional which is not helpful in that scenario. Whereas he was in the here and now which is a classic sign of an adult ego state. Just to say that that's the ideal ego state. Right. Thank you. Thanks for your